hell continues tonight on The Independence with a place that seems to get more hellish by the day, Iraq. America's foreign policy leaders thought they were removing an imminent danger to the world community, eliminating a breeding ground for Islamic terrorists, and creating a potentially lasting democratic example in the autocratic Middle East. Instead, Iraq is ground zero of a transnational religious war, and the region looks less stable and promising than ever. Joining us is retired Major General Paul Eaton, who was assigned to Iraq in the crucial years of 2003 and 2004, and has since become a leading critic of the Bush-Cheney administration. General, thanks for being with us. Thanks, team. Great to be with you. Now, from your perspective, what was the original sin in the planning, execution, cons conception of the Iraq War? Well, the in the planning phase, uh, military planners deal in uh, sequels and branches, and the sequel is the what's next. So when we took Baghdad and, uh, and secured it with the 3rd Division and uh, the Marines, uh, we did not have a plan to address a failed state. We didn't have the uh, phase 4 planning, so when the pot uh, boiled over, we were unprepared, we were ill-manned to, uh, to address that problem. We simply didn't have enough uh, troops on the ground to, to work it. Now, and do you think that the subsequent instability throughout the Middle East uh, in, in places like Syria and Libya, which have made headlines in, in recent years and months, uh, that that is directly related to the fallout from the Iraq war conflict? I think they're related, but it goes back to the 1920s, the Sykes-Picot arrangement that uh, never really did settle the, uh, the political realities of the region. And uh, you don't have people who are trained, who are, uh, who are personally inclined to, uh, to have sophisticated governance where the rights of the minorities are assured. If you don't do that, if you don't if, if you're a majority Shia population, Shia Arab population, and if you haven't uh, addressed the rights of your, uh, of your Sunni 20% in Iraq, of your Kurd 20% in Iraq, then your political structure is going to break down. If you haven't integrated, then uh, you will see exactly what's transpiring right now before us. General, let me ask you this. Uh, you write and talk a lot about not getting counterinsurgency correct in Iraq, not having a plan for after the, the state at that time fell. Arguably years later after fits and starts and many mistakes that I do not want to minimize, the surge did get some parts of counterinsurgency right. Uh, the Anbar uprising created some, some good out of that, and arguably in other parts of the country as well, and even in the central government in Iraq, although it was flawed. Uh, we're talking about good intentions. Is there an argument that the good intentions of extricating ourselves from Iraq, perhaps a little bit too quickly, lost some of those actual gains? In a perfect world, we would have continued to do what we were doing best in 2006-2007 when General Petraeus decided that he was going to bust out of the great big forward operating bases and to soldier shoulder to shoulder with our Iraqi military and our Iraqi policemen. We gave them confidence. We also gave them links to combat multipliers that gave them additional resilience in the face of uh, counterinsurgency warfare. The, the fact that we pulled all of those advisors, all of those Americans who were sh soldiering next to our Iraqis, next to our Iraqi allies, by pulling them out, we removed that great confidence factor. There was a second effect. We also removed the, uh, the influence that we had on the Prime Minister, yep. who immediately went back to his old ways, the old ways of leadership uh, for decades and centuries in that region, and that is a failure to include the minorities in governance. So al-Maliki started replacing very good commanders with commanders who were more loyal to him than competent on the battlefield. I want to get a, put you on the spot before we leave. Okay. Um, in hindsight, knowing everything we know now, should we have gone in Iraq in the first place? Uh, we should not have gone to Iraq in the first place. All right, General Eaton, thank you very much. Next, our number one government good intention gone wrong. You are on the road to hell.